Hello appraisers, this is Brandon with Choice Valuation and in this Spark video we're going to be covering how to set up the one-time export for Flex MLS systems. So if you use a Flex MLS system, this is the video to watch. I'm going to go ahead and get into it. Now this is, uh, by the way, this is the Spark uh, for Appraisers website. It's just sparkforappraisers.com. If you want to get into Spark and use it for the first time, this is the website you go to and you just click get started now. If you've already done this part and set up your account with Spark, then um, what we're going to be covering here is setting it up in your MLS if you have a Flex system. So uh, this is my MLS. I'm in Armless, which is a Flex system. Um, whatever MLS you're in, uh, you know, if it's the in New Mexico or uh, Florida or wherever you are, it, it this these instructions I'm about to give you are going to be, uh, they'll work for you. Um, the fields might look a little different and that's okay, but the overall instructions are gonna work. So let's go ahead and get into it. So the first thing you do is you click the menu button at the top left and you find preferences. And then under preferences, you click my exports. Now, um, the one caveat to that is if you are in an older version of the Flex website, which I, I don't even think exists anymore, but just on the off chance that you are, then instead of clicking menu, going to preferences and clicking my exports, what you would do is right around here on your screen, in there's a menu bar and it'll say preferences. You just click preferences and then my exports. And that's the only difference. Okay, so we're on this screen now. And so you can see I've already got a Spark and a Spark multifamily export set up, but we're gonna go ahead and uh, pretend like I don't and we'll start a new one. So you left click the new button. Then on this screen, you name it. So we're gonna name it Spark and I'm gonna put a one on it just because I already have a Spark export. Um, you make sure this default setting is the top button, which is detail group names show in front of the detail name. You shouldn't have to change that or worry about it, but just make sure that top one is checked. And then down here in this section, you're going to select the main, at least the first time you do this, you're going to select the main type of search that you do for single family and condos, which should be called residential. So you just select that and then you click next. And then on this screen, this is where it might look a little different for you, depending on which MLS you're in. Uh, but again, as long as you're in a flex system, this will work. You left click the very top field. You scroll down to the very bottom. And then before you do anything else on your keyboard, hold down the shift key, which I just did. And then you left click the bottom field. What that will do is highlight every field in between. Then you click add. By the way, when I say click, I mean left click. Um, I don't think there's gonna be any situation in here where you're gonna be right clicking. And so now you see all the fields are over here. Just scroll through, make sure it looks like they're all there. And then you click save. And so now you give this a few seconds and your flex system will update the screen. And now you can see there's our new export called Spark One. And now if you wanna set it up so that Spark will work with rentals and multifamily, then you're gonna to need to repeat that process one time for each. So let's just go through it. You click new. Um, actually, let's start from scratch. You click menu, you click my exports under preferences, you click new, and we'll name this Spark uh, rentals one. And you make sure and choose the right category or the right property type, which I'll choose residential rental. Yours might be called something slightly different. Then you click next. Again, left click the top field, scroll down, hold down shift, left click the bottom field, let go of shift, and then you click add. They're all there, you click save. And then you just repeat that one more time, go to my exports and you hit new. And then, and by the way, you only have to do this if you're actually going to be using Spark for multifamilies or for rentals. You don't, otherwise you don't have to do it. Um, so now I'll click multiple dwellings. In your MLS, it might be called something like residential income or whatever else, but whatever you use for your multifamily search, you click that, next, and then, oh, I didn't name it. Let's just call it that, next. And then you choose all the fields. Left click the top, scroll down, hold down shift, left click the bottom, let go of shift and click add, and then click save. And that's pretty much it. And so now you can actually go in and do your search. And so now that's what I'm gonna show you. So here is my search that I did, and I've now got the Spark export set up. 
And so this is a search for all the competing properties in my defined neighborhood boundaries. This is everything I'm saying is competing with my subject. I do that search and then I, I see here's the list of it and I go and click export. Now this is for my 1004MC and so I wanna make sure that all matches are selected. And by the way, I did a two year search. Um, you can do one year, two year, five year, 10 year, anything up to 10 years you can do. Um, obviously for the 1004MC, it's only gonna use the most recent year, but in Spark, you can customize it so that you can have your own analysis over a longer period of time if that's better for your particular situation. So I usually do two years. You just make sure this is selected. So export all matches. You have to do this. You have to click this button that says custom text export. And then you have to make sure it shows Spark in here. If it doesn't show Spark, it's not going to work and it's going to say you're missing fields. Um, if you do this, so it says Spark, but you don't check this box, then it's also going to say that you're missing fields when you go to load it into Spark. So make sure you do both. You click this and you make sure this says Spark and you'll be golden. And then you just got to type in this code here and you hit export. And now it's downloading our file. That's great, we're all set. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click return to search results. And this time instead, I'm just going to um, export properties I wanna use in my grid. So I don't want all 72, obviously, I don't want a, a grid of 72 properties. So you just go in here and choose the properties you wanna load into your grid. Now I've already selected seven. And so I just click export and you make sure and click this button so it only exports those seven. And then again, choose custom text export this button right here make sure it says spark and then type in your code all right and hit export okay there we go so now i've got two files um this one was my file that had 72 in it which is what i'm going to use to have spark calculate my mc and do my market analysis and this file has just my uh, properties for my grid so now i can go into spark um, I'm just going to click get started. Now I already have an account, so it's going to automatically log me in and let you pick your effective date. And now you can do one of two things uh, for my comps. I can either click the upload button and go find that file, which is in my downloads folder. So most MLS systems, they those files are in your downloads folder. So you click downloads over here. You find that file, which we know is called custom export, and then you can hit open or, and that'll load it all in, or I just hit cancel there. If you're using Google Chrome or Firefox, then instead, if you've got those files down here because you're using Google Chrome, you just click it and hold your mouse button down and drag it. And you drag it up to here where it says upload under add comparables. And then when you drop it on, oh, I draw, I used the wrong file. So it told me that file has over 30 properties and Spark will only allow you to upload up to 30 into your grid. Um, obviously 30 is a lot for your grid. So uh, I chose the wrong file. This was actually the one that had 72. The one for my grid is this one. So I'm gonna click and drag this one up and drop it on. Now it's loading those properties, it's grabbing the public records and it's done. And now, so you can see right here, I'm on the grid side of Spark. There's the market analysis side, the grid side and the cost data side. So I'm uploaded those, I can click next and I can see those properties in my grid here. They pop up on the screen. Uh, now I can go ahead and load in my subject if I want to or whatever you wanna do there, but let's just move along and do the market analysis. Now, again, for competing properties, and this is what Spark will use for the 1004MC, I click the plus button. I find the file, which is in my downloads folder, and it was this one right here. Or if you wanna just drag it because you're using Google Chrome or Firefox, then you just, click the file, whoops, that's the wrong one, this one, and you drag it up to the plus sign, make sure you're hovered over the plus sign, you'll know because that dark blue little box appears around the plus button, and then you drop it on. And now if you're using Firefox, those files don't appear down here, they will appear up here inside of an arrow. There's gonna be a blue arrow that appears, you just click that arrow, and then you'll see the files and you can just drag them over. Uh, if you're using a Microsoft Edge or Internet Explorer, then you don't have an option. You have to click the button, tell Spark where the file is, and click Open. Uh, okay, so that's pretty much it. You click Next here, and then you'll have your data. Now, you can also load in a neighborhood file, which is how Spark will um, get your low, high, and predominant price and age, but that's for a different video. Uh, hope this helps. If you have any questions, just contact us. 
to do that, you click the gear icon and you click contact us and you'll get our information. All right, thanks a lot.